And now the AM News in detail. Ranking member on the Energy Committee in Parliament, John Ginapo, has warned against peddling of falsehood as the committee prepares to meet the Energy Minister, Dr. Matthew Pukupempe, and other players in the energy sector. The meeting, which is scheduled for this weekend, will afford the committee to demand answers to the current doomsaw situations experienced across the country. But ahead of that meeting, John Ginapo says the parties must be ready to tell Ghanaians the true state of affairs. Well, what beats my imagination is how government and needs communicators could think that they can take all of us on that ride. I mean, it really, really beats my imagination that 30 million Ghanaians you think that you can just yeah. take us on this ride with this flimsy excuse of so-called transformer overloads. When transformers are overloaded, it means that yeah, there isn't enough supply there's too much supply of power so why are we now curtailing supply of power to our neighboring countries more importantly now the official document from Greco on their letterhead authenticated document establishes that we've been shedding load because of fuel challenges all this while when we said there's fuel there's fuel problem a lot of people said we didn't know what we're talking about we're naysayers why do we wish bad for this country? Why are we calling for a load shedding table? They knew, they knew. Because there's a weekly report from Gridco to the minister. And all the weekly reports I see confirms that there's a deficit in generation, primarily because of fuel challenges. What we need is to find a way as a country collectively to procure adequate fuel for the plant. And I would make a proposal to chairman that the media should be invited. I would make a proposal to chairman that the media should be invited. This is a serious matter. This is the burning issue now. Industry complaining, households are complaining, commercial entities are complaining. There is a clear uncertainty. Nobody wants to speak to the issue. The president is quiet. The vice president, who chairs the cash water for mechanism and head of economic management team, is quiet. The minister has been dismissive. And, and, I mean, you just don't see leadership. And so, MPs, we are struggling and doing everything we can to bring these agencies. So we don't have that much sway on them as compared to the executive. But the president can fire these heads of these agencies within the twinkle of an eye. MPs is going to take a daunting task. And even when you want to censure ministers, you saw what, what happened on the floor. They will do our best. They will, first of all, even honor the invitation and hope that they'll be honest. Now, Joy News can authoritatively report that a police inspector accused of using a service rifle to kill his girlfriend at a doom in Kumase is alive and healthy. Social media reports have alleged that, alleged that the death of Inspector Ahmed Chumisi, also known as Tycoon, who has been in prison remand since his arrest last year. But Oheming Tewia of our security desk, who was given exclusive access to the remand police officer, reports he is hail and Haiti as the prison authorities begin investigations into the fake reports. Inspector Ahmed Chumisi has been on remand since his arrest in May 2023 after a specialized police operation led to his arrest in his hideout at Setre near Efijasi in the Ashanti region. He has been accused of shooting 26-year-old Victoria Dapa, also known as Majwa, multiple times in the abdomen and chest on April 20, 2023 at about 9.50 p.m. Though he is expected to appear before a Kumasi High Court on April 15, 2024, rumors about his death spread on social media. The authorities of Kumasi Central Prisons granted me access to the cells of the accused. Sporting a white t-shirt over a pair of khaki shorts and slippers, he responded to questions from prison officers. He was healed and healthy. Inspector Ahmed Chumesi told the officers in my presence that he was privy to rumors of his death. Here is the public relations officer of the Kumasi Central Prisons, Superintendent Richard Bukari. Categorically, not true. I emphatically say it is not true. Ahmed Chumesi is hale and hearty in custody. Nothing has happened to him and I promise nothing 
will happen to him. Uh, I took the pain to walk yourself through the prison to have a look at him. And looking at him, he's not even sick. And I wonder under what circumstances Chumasi will be declared uh, dead. Even for natural causes, we don't pray for it. But as professional as the prisons have been, uh, taking note that he's a state property, we will not do anything that will compromise his health, his security, and his well-being in the prisons. So I say on authority that Chumasi is not dead. He's alive, healthy, and undergoing his trial processes. Appalled by the circulation of the fake news, prison authorities have launched investigations to get to the bottom of the issue and punish the culprits. Superintendent Bukhari again. Anybody involved in circulating such information should be very careful. After all, it is even against the laws of the state to circulate false information. It is a chargeable offense and you can be imprisoned for it. But we are not leaving it just there. We are going further to investigate the source of that info. Whoever would have generated such false information that is causing this upheaval in the general public will have to be dealt with according to the laws of Ghana. He's just not denting the image of the prison service, but he's creating unnecessary fear and panic in the nation, which is not too good for our development, considering how far we have come. The prisons all this while has been very professional in handling uh, issues of public interest of this nature and we promise that we aren't going to compromise on our standards. Meanwhile, Inspector Chumasi is expected to appear at the Kumasi High Court on April 15, 2024. From Kumasi, for Joy News, Wahimi we are reporting. From Kumasi, let's now come back to Accra in Agbogbloshi. Traders combine efforts to tidy up the markets instead of relying solely on government assistance to deal with incessant filth menace. Evidently, after a rainy Wednesday morning, the market area was clean, yet choked gutters remain a concern. I bring you today's episode of Filth Exhibition from Agbogbloshi, highlighting the traders' proactive efforts and the work that still remains. This is Agbogbloshi. It's just about five hours after a heavy rainpour. And we came to the market to assess the sanitation situation in Agbogloshi. But upon entering the market, we realized that the market looked clean. For a second there, we thought that the impact of our Joy New series field exhibition perhaps had to cost our leaders to clean up the city a little bit. So we went out to ask the market women, what really accounts for the cleanliness we see? Now is a market woman here in Agbogloshi. Why is the town clean today? Uh, today because of the rain, that's why. And Wednesday, Wednesday no market. But tomorrow, Thursday, we have Agbogloshi market here. Okay. The cabbage peoples and all the peoples will come on this area. But today, no market. But who cleans the market? When was the last time you saw AMA, Zoom Lion, anybody? Do they come and clean here? Yes, AMA people. Yes. They used to come here on once in the while, months. Actually, first time when the rain is falling, you see this side is not nice. Okay. But because of I don't, I don't coastal, okay. they come and do some coastal here. Okay. That's why they make here clean. Okay. They make this place clean. So the people, they are Doom Coastal people, they are the ones who made the, who clean up the market. Uh, and the market woman too. We gather and pay 70 each. We the sellers here, we gather to pay 70, 70. And I don't propose to help us to do it. Okay. To do. So you clean the market yourselves yes. and not the AMA who comes to clean the market? No, 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 no not the AMA. So just a few meters from where Nas spoke to us, let's now engage Kenneth. In this area, for instance, we have these uh, Radiadum Coastal. They are the ones who actually wanted, wanting to sell 
they are aware here. So they came to prepare, put some sand and some gravels and all those things. And now today, our market is looking very good. At the moment, it's not our intention to say the market looks good. It's not that bad anyway, uh, because for their sake, today our market looks very good. As to the cleanup exercise, normally what happens is we normally do it periodically. It, can, it could happen on Saturday, it could happen on uh, uh, Monday, or any, any day it falls. And we engage the AMA because they, they will see to it that we do that until 10 o'clock before we all resume work. That is when the cleanup exercise is ongoing. You know, the market is meant for us and we are in it. So definitely we have to make sure we put our hands together and join our hands together before we could do anything here. You understand what I'm saying? As a cleanup exercise, is, just, is it just surface? Because although it looks on the surface that the market is clean, a deeper look, like into the gutter where we are standing, reveals lots of filth still. Who's responsible for taking care of this? There are some issues that, that need to be addressed, like the gutters. Our gutters need to be covered, you understand? And moreover, if they are not, and the reason is, if they are not covered, a lot of filth enter. You know, rubbers all over, pure water rubber, and a whole lot. People are throwing maggie rubbers everywhere. And you can see even uh, cabbage. They are even peeling off cabbage and all that. Anything could enter the gutter when it's not covered. And, in, in it, and, the, and the AMA is also not supporting. Because um, people are using pallets, that's why I said it, it boils down to market centers. There should, have, there should be a market center where everybody could sit. Uh, there, there should be lots where everybody could sit so that they will leave the road to be free, so that the gutters can be free. That's what it is. But if that thing is not happening, then there's no way our gutters will be free. Regardless of how it looks on the surface, a second look at the gutters where the market's women sit on the roads reveal that the gutters are choked and there's still more work to be done. So we caught up with the queen mother of the market, Mabel, and this is what she had to say. Because last week, AMA director, Auntie Masibaha, is it the case that every month AMA actually comes to clean the markets for you? Any every month. It was Three days today, any of my meeting, say where you got them. It's a member to anchor. I just say where you are anchor. Friday where you got them. It appears these traders have taken it upon themselves to clean their environment because government is not really helping the situation. How do we move forward from the sanitation crisis? Maybe you have the answers. For Joy News, I'm Sweetie Habochi. That was today's episode of Filth Exhibition, a Joy News series. Now moving on, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, Andy Apiakubi, is clashing with his ranking member over the recently announced hike in passport application fees. Andy Apiakubi describes the concern expressed by Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa regarding the hike in fees as tantrums. The minority spokesperson on foreign affairs told Joy News, while he was not opposed to the increase in fees in principle, he was not in support of the magnitude of the increase. Well, uh, not uh, bode well for our country. The timing is bad. We have uh, unprecedented economic crisis. Uh, inflation has gone through the roof. Um, uh, you know that the general living conditions are terrible. We have a cost of living crisis. This cannot be the time uh, to do this. So we... We made our views uh, very, very clear uh, to them. Uh, what happened subsequently is that uh, they uh, went ahead and this um, uh, was added to the general fees and charges. Uh, but we insisted that even if this is where they want to get to, it could be done in a graduated manner. Uh, because what the foreign minister admitted is that uh, they had not touched the uh, passport fees 
for a long time, for many years. So I said that, look, you, you don't um, virtually uh, derelict for this long, and then suddenly you wake up say that uh, it is the lowest in the sub-region, and so you want to slap such a high percentage. And so let it be graduated. That was the advice we had for them. That is why we suggested that let it be graduated, because if you look at other countries uh, who left us behind, it was being done gradually, and they didn't even achieve that increment during periods of economic crisis, not when we are going through financial haircuts, we are desperate for an IMF bailout and all of that. So I am deeply disappointed that the ministry did not take our advice and has just done one full swoop at the goal, just imposing this high increment yeah, but, on, but the, on, on, on the suffering but, 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 but this was subject to parliamentary up. this was subject to parliamentary approval is there any possibly any last minute intervention that might come through from your office or perhaps the minority side on the foreign affairs court? when when the house resumes we intend to revisit this matter because uh, my recommendation I believe that is sound uh, our uh, committee was clear that this should not be done uh, in one uh, single swoop. But reacting to these comments at a news conference yesterday, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Andy Apiakubi, argued that Okujeto Ablakwe's stance was without basis as the decision to approve the proposed fees was unanimous in the NDC-led subsidiary legislation committee. For anybody to step out to say that they vehemently oppose the review of the fee is uh, neither here nor there. And the person who is throwing those tantrums is not a member of that committee. And indeed, it was not the work of the Foreign Affairs Committee, which I chair, which he is a ranking. So this is the work of the Subsidiary Legislation Committee and indeed chaired by the I, uh, NDC uh, member of parliament. So it never occurred in the committee meeting that there was protestation as to the uh, recommendation for review. So it was a unanimous decision taken by the committee. It's amazing uh, how Ghanaians want us to be political all the time. And that people are saying it is election year and therefore, we don't have to. It is a lesson here. Let us not forget that it is your money. It is your own money that could otherwise give you something else for the benefit of the whole, rather than for the benefit of only a segment of society. So although it is um, a lesson here, it is important for us to be prudent in the use of public resources. Again, the same people who complain of the increase are the same people who are buying tickets for use uh, every now and again as they travel. And they are paying $2,000 plus for one trip. They, you cannot travel without the passport, even though you may have the money to pay for the $2,000 plus. So the best document that gives you the opportunity to travel is only 500 Ghana cities. In other stories, Kenya's president, President William Ruto, has described the current setup of the African Union as dysfunctional, adding that there's little accountability in the structures of the Union. The leader of the East African country, who is paying a state visit to Ghana, revealed yesterday that he's had close talks with Ghana's President Ekufuado on the need to reform the African Union and its institutions to transform the continent. As part of his activities for the day, William Ruto delivered a public lecture at the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area in Accra, where he strongly argued or urged Africans to join hands in changing the narrative of an Africa inflicted with poverty and low level of development. There's more in this report. A rousing welcome for Kenya's president, Dr. William Ruto, who was on a state visit to the Republic of Ghana. The East African leader, as part of his activities, delivered a lecture at the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area. 
Secretary General of the Continental Body, Wam Kele Mene, in his address to the gathering, pointed out how pivotal the African continental free trade area is and plans to turn around the fortunes of the continent using the African continental free trade area. Of course, much remains to be done to make sure that we all realize the ambitions and the goals of the AFCFTA. It presents an unprecedented opportunity for our continent to continue, to continue to break the legacy of colonialism. That effort to break the legacy of colonialism, as we all know, started in May 1963 in Addis Ababa at the formation of the Organization of African Unity. We are therefore well poised, a continent of 1.4 billion people, with a combined GDP that is projected by the year 2050 to be close to 16.2 trillion United States dollars, we're well poised to be a single market that is globally competitive, uh, that has advanced industrial development capabilities, that has food security to feed herself by eliminating barriers to trade in intra-Africa. Taking a stand to address the gathering, Kenya's President William Ruto called for reforms in the global financial architecture while leaving no stone unturned in also calling for accountability and reforms within the African Union. President Nana Kufuado told us this morning some significant statistics that intra-European trade is all the way to 73-75%. Intra-African trade is down at 12, maybe 14, maybe 15%. And it speaks volumes of not where we are, but the potential that exists for us to grow our trade. It is important for us, if we have to have an African Union that works for the people of our continent, it must be accountable and there must be a mechanism to adjudicate, a court to adjudicate on matters that affect our organization. The African continental free trade area has been described as the last opportunity for the continent to transform and to turn around its economic fortunes. After today's lecture, there is a common resolve by all actors to trade more amongst African countries and to boost economic growth across the continent. That is very, very key because in all this trade, there's the need to have a stabilized financial system. And also, it was a good occasion to hear from uh, His Excellency Mene Wamkele talk about the next phase, the next direction, and also to meet captains of industry here to listen. And I know what His Excellency Ruto said, he's going to do it. I have also confidence in the continental free trade when they assured that they are expecting about 10 billion in the Afriism Bank. That is the essence. If you're able to um, uh, give resources to the Afriism Bank, so that they use it as an onward um, credit to the uh, trading populace. Then, of course, the attraction also comes. Let us again reporting for Joy News, Trade House, Accra. Right, so that will be all for the AM News. Up next is the news review and then the conversation starts. You still want to stick with us from now till 10 a.m.